joining us this morning on the phone. Um, he was sworn in uh, in 2011 as Inglewood's 12th mayor. He's been uh, in public safety for over 45 years, municipal government as well. He's also got a degree in business administration from uh, Cal State University and a master's degree in business administration. Mayor James T. Butts of Inglewood, good morning. Good morning, Dominique. Thank you so much for checking in with us. We're hearing a lot about what's happening nationally and even uh, countywide and in Los Angeles. Love to hear your updates on the city of Inglewood. Well... In the county, there have been 409 cases of COVID-19 virus reported. Uh, they had 71 new cases uh, over the last two days. No, excuse me, 132 new cases in the last 40 hours. In Inglewood, there's only been two in all this time. And uh, countywide, the death toll is a five. And so what we've done, you can go to our website, www.cityofinglewood.org. And you'll find out all the things that are happening in Inglewood and what you can do uh, to be safe. Now, um, the city of Inglewood only has one case. Maybe we should lock everybody else out. I'm just kidding. But um, <laughs> what, what restrictions um, does Inglewood have? Is there anything in addition to or less than what we're hearing from the state of California and, this, and the um, city of L.A.? No, actually, the restrictions are pretty severe. Parks are closed. Uh, all non-essential businesses are closed. And just recently, uh, it, would be, it was yesterday, they modified the state's order to include nail shops, barber shops, and air shops, which is uh, pretty severe. Um, we don't have any more restrictions than that. And what we're doing is we're trying to keep this in perspective. Uh, the reality is, is that we don't have, we have two diagnosed cases so far, according to the county. They're both two individuals in one household, and uh, they're self-quarantining. So we hope that soon the state will lift these restrictions and let people get back to work. And in the meantime, if the government is going to force people not to work, then every American should receive rental or mortgage assistance of $2,000 a month until this crisis is over. You can't use the power of the government to tell people they can't work without compensating them. Well, I think that's a really, uh, really good way of putting it, uh, Mayor Butts, because, of course, you are a business uh, man, so you're going to look at it that way. This is not like welfare. It's like if you make it impossible for me to work, then you've got to make a way for me to get by. And when I keep I keep hearing about, you know, delays and being able to pay your bill, forbearance and delays. And I'm concerned that we come out of, you know, two weeks, three weeks, two months, whatever it ends up being. And we've got all these bills piled up. And, you know, how do you Dominique, catch up? Dominique, that makes no sense at all. They're yeah. talking about spending billions of dollars to bail out the airlines. And maybe, yeah. well, they should do that. But it is not welfare. It's not a handout. It is you're exercising the power of government to say that people can't work for a public purpose, but they should be compensated for that. That goes hand in hand with exercising your power to protect people. You can't protect people and then starve them to death. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm... Um I'm glad that, you know, you, you're putting in, in such a clear manner because I'm hearing this and what I hear is, for me, I hear worry. I don't want to have so many bills piled up that I can never dig out of that, um, you know, that backlog. Even if I've been forgiven, you know, late fees or whatever, I still don't want to have three months of DWP or three months of mortgage piled up. Um, what about small businesses? You're a businessman. So many small businesses are really being forced to close they're probably going to go out of business i'm worried you know i always talk to you about gentrification you know that's a pet peeve of mine i'm worried that we'll wake up after this covid thing and find no black businesses what can businesses do right now to you know to protect themselves but let me tell you something business owners black white and brown no business can survive if this extends months long with no income and still required to pay leases.
mortgages, uh, salaries, overhead. It's impossible. So it's going to affect all of us as Americans. And so this means there has to be the recognition that every component of American life that is harmed by this while we uh, starve the virus of a new victim should be compensated, not in full, but in a manner that allows them to survive and come out on the other end. Yeah. Um, I, I was... Uh in a way, encouraged to see that the stadium um, construction would continue. Of course, I worry about workers, but I also worry about everything grinding to a halt. I've noticed they're still working on the metro. Can you tell me the logic behind that? Because some people may be alarmed, saying, well, why are they not staying at home? Well, Dominique, as soon as it appeared that 3,000 jobs every day in the city of Inglewood were going to be cut off unilaterally, including 1,200 Inglewood residents that work there every day. I wrote to the uh, chair of the board of supervisors, Captain Barger, that my interpretation of the governor's order would allow construction. And, and that next day, the governor did modify his order to include construction of all types. And the uh, project is practicing distancing because of the way the work is done. They're providing protective equipment for the workers and so these workers are going to work every day, and they're generating, a, uh, finishing a project that is going to generate probably 12,000 jobs, permanent jobs, for people in Los Angeles and 30% local hire for people in Inglewood. So that is why, and I think it's right, I thought it was the right thing to do, and that's why I wrote the uh, chair of the Board of Supervisors. Will the city of Inglewood offer any programs for businesses within the city, small businesses, um, to, you know, help them during this time? I mean, I want you to think this through. Um, what we do is we support the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. The Chamber of Commerce is the entity that is the focus point. It's the, the coalition building point for businesses in the city. And we strongly support the Chamber. That being said... This, this quarantine situation that we're in, it's going to probably cost the city about $20 million in tax <laughs> revenue when it's all said and done for the year. If we had not built our reserves over to over $59 million, we would be out of business when this is over with. I am concerned for the cities that don't have the reserves that Inglewood has generated. So when you talk about what's the city going to do, the city is one of the the um, victims of this crisis as well, because we have to still provide police, fire, um, and all the services for our residents. So um, this is something that we're all in together. No doubt. Um, for people that, you know, want to help some way, what would you suggest? I mean, you're, you know, there's a, there is a lot of Inglewood pride. There's a lot of people that are willing to volunteer. But right now, you know, folks are supposed to stay home. Well, that's a that's a pretty much a double-edged sword. If if the purpose is to keep people away from potential infections, to allow 14 days to pass for the people that have been infected with the virus for them to be uh, non-contagious, then to do things as noble as they might sound provides more opportunity to transmit the virus. So I wouldn't recommend that. So keep your butt home. Uh, I said it. The mayor didn't. <laughs> No, I, didn't, uh, I didn't say keep your butt home, no. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. He never said it. Um, you know, we're hearing a lot of rumors, Mayor uh, James Butts. You, you always seem to have your uh, finger on the pulse. Um, people, I, I don't know if you heard that the gentleman from um, Watts who called earlier is saying that he's worried. He's hearing that people are infected at King Hospital, even though we've heard on front page from a doctor who works there that says they're not. Um, we're hearing a lot about the possibility of uh, quarantines, you know, much stricter quarantines in the city or even on a federal level. Are you, can you speak on anything like that? I would tell you this, there is nobody that knows exactly the situation. The ah. governor gave out an estimate uh, yesterday that before it's over and done with, that 25.5 million Californians will be infected with this virus. There are only 40 million in the state of California. That means they think 56% of the population will have the virus. So 
what they're telling you is nobody really knows how deep the well is. But the hope in that is that means there are will be millions of people that have the virus with no symptoms. So that doesn't mean that it's going to be fatal in, in any large numbers. And this may end up being something that a vaccine is developed for or that people develop antibodies against just as we do against the flu. So what there needs to be real talk given to people about the total exposure that could be and the thing is we don't need to kill everyone's economic dreams while we sort our way through this so yeah. we don't need to panic we need to be rational we need to face reality which did not happen in the beginning of this situation and we need to preserve our lives as we know it yeah i mean i think it's it's what you're saying is a good balance of you know the fact that 98 99% of people who get COVID-19 will not die. They'll be sick for a period of time and then they'll get better and they'll keep it moving. You know, we don't expect anyone on the Utah Jazz to die. Like, that's very, very, very unlikely. It's it, it's more about protecting our elders and those people who are already sick with chronic conditions. Well, let, let me give you another perspective. For the flu season that spanned the end of 2019 to the beginning of 2020, 19 million Americans contracted the flu. And they estimate between 50 and 70,000 of them died from the flu or complications of the flu. Those deaths occur primarily in the most vulnerable populations, the very young and the very old or people with pre-existing conditions. And so we got to put this in perspective, and that's not happening right now. There needs to be balance between this and other illnesses, and that's not occurring. Yeah, I mean, I understand that this is a new unknown virus and, and it seems to be spreading really quickly. But that's why I love, you know, your your um, your balance that you're talking about. Let's understand that, you know, you're not even if 56 percent actually get it, which to me, that seems wildly inflated. But if they do, it most does. people, a lot of people won't even know they have it. I mean, how is that? Italy is nowhere near there. They're like 12 percent or something. And they're the most infected in the whole world. And we're going to get 56. OK. I guess that's worst case scenario. But even if they did, as you point out, a lot of people won't even know they have it. Um, let's won't go to even know they have it. And that's the only way that it could be transmitted so frequently is if there were people that were had the virus and weren't sick. But go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, let's go to uh, Zelda calling from L.A. Um, we're talking with the mayor of Inglewood. You're calling from L.A. Um, but Zelda, you're on. Good morning, Dominique. Good morning, Mayor Butts. Um, I Good called morning, to ask you about the parking situation. You know, here in Los Angeles uh, County, um, and I think a lot of people are assuming that it's across the board, that because we've been instructed uh, to self-quarantine, that when our only availability as far as parking is mostly on the street, because that is what was said that they wouldn't be ticketing people. But I have friends and family members that live in Inglewood that said they have gotten ticketed. And so I'm trying to find out information on what's fact and what is fiction. From Got here. it. So is there any okay, relief okay, from okay. that? Yeah. Okay. No, first of all, so in perspective, Dominic, first of all, it's only the city of Los Angeles and three other cities that have suspended park a uh, parking enforcement in neighborhoods for certain violations not all violations now there's a reason that 84 of the 88 cities are not doing that and i'll tell you why parking is a very scarce resource. our neighborhoods like most neighborhoods were built in the 1940s and the 1950s when people had a single car so the streets aren't very wide and some of the drivers aren't very deep and so you have to manage parking. Now, we cite on street sweeping and trash pickup days. We have them on the same day so that we don't have two days of restricted parking. If you do not enforce that, you will not be able to clean the street, nor will you be able to pick up trash. That in a, in a situation where your concern is hygiene and sanitation is insanity. Also, if you suspend parking enforcement in a neighborhood, 
Everybody knows there are people on their street or live around the block. They have four and five cars, and they look for places to hog parking. So if you set a situation where there's no enforcement, then someone who doesn't use their cars can park them. And for the duration of the emergency, and they will use up the parking supply. And you will not clean your streets nor will you pick up trash. That makes no sense. So we are suspending any fine, any increase in fines or payment of fines for the duration of the emergency. But we need to maintain order uh, in the in the use of parking resources. Okay, we're going to go to Shante calling from L.A. Also, hi Shante, you're on with Mayor James T. Butts Jr. Good morning, Dominique. Uh, good morning, mm. Mayor Butts. Um, just had a question. I listen to you all the time, Dominique. I love your show, just to say. Thank you. And you're welcome. And I have a question for Mayor Butts. Um, I'm born and raised in Inglewood. Uh, I live in Los Angeles right now because I have a property that I'm fixing up. And long story short, my sister worked for Spa 313. And it's been told to her that Mayor Butts is encouraging them to stay open. And it's a, it's a beauty and nail salon. So I'm just worried about that. I'm a health care worker. And we're on the front line, and honestly, we are afraid of what's going on because we don't know the ramifications. And I'm just wondering how a business could be encouraged to stay open when, you know, we're being encouraged as citizens to stay home. Uh, I did encourage everyone that could stay open to stay open, but didn't you hear me say yesterday the governor brought in his order to include nail shops, barber shops, and... Uh, and hair salons, and that's why I just advertise it right now. So when they weren't concluded, of course I encourage them to stay open because people have to survive. And if they maintain proper hygiene, distancing where possible, the uh, stylists wear masks and rubber gloves, they minimize their chance of infection or, or, or spreading the virus. So I'm practical. Um, I want as many people that can continue their lives to continue their lives. But now that the governor's expanded his order, I'm rolling with that. Okay, glad you clarified that. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. If you were allowed to stay open, why wouldn't you? Restaurants are why still open. You, of yeah, yeah. Of course. If you were allowed to stay open, why wouldn't you? When you're no longer allowed to, guess what? You can't. I mean, that's what that is. Right. And, then, and then if you if you are allowed to, but you're scared and you have a problem with it, then you would you would close. I then mean, that's that's your option. Common sense, Dominique. And, and that's what I use in my approach to everything. But you know what, um, Mayor, Mayor Butts, I do feel like right now people are confused. And I understand why what seems like common sense to you or even to me might seem confusing because we're getting one thing from the feds and something else from the county something else from our cities and then people are hearing a lot of rumors um you have said go to cityofinglewood.org is there any other resource that you would consider reliable um during this time of crisis when you say research, i consider it, it's information to, resource <laughs> to sentient beings to look at sources of information and make the best determination for themselves and their families, okay? You know, it depends on who you trust. If you trust me, go to our website and rely upon it. If you trust only the state, go to the state website. Get your information there. If you trust, more, first and foremost, the federal government, go to the federal website. But there is a plethora of information of, that abounds, but there are also different opinions as to how things should be conducted. And that's the beauty of our political system, that you have a number of different leaders at a number of different levels, and you have to go with the people you have the most confidence in. Let's go to Wendell from Los Angeles. Good morning, Wendell. You're on with Mayor James T. Butts, Jr. Welcome. Hey, greetings. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to ask one question of you. Uh, are there any plans to build a state-of-the-art medical center to serve the city of Inglewood? You don't know how many times I question. First of all, cities don't build hospitals. They're, uh, it costs a minimum of $100 million to build a hospital, nor do we operate hospitals. They're extraordinarily expensive endeavors uh, to run, 
And so there's usually a, a combination of private funding in a for-profit hospital that is supplemented by state and county dollars to operate trauma or uh, emergency uh, trauma centers. And that's what it takes. So the city, its budget is about, for uh, general operating funds, about $128 million a year. We would not be able to build a $100 million facility and then fund it. That'd be impossible. Right. I mean, that makes sense. But at the same time, you've leveraged a lot of things that folks thought were impossible from a stadium to, you know, um, even working with the schools, which is clearly not in your portfolio as far as what your responsibilities are as mayor. So I guess here too. Right. So you can't get, you know, you can't be um, upset if people expect you to do things that may be (laughs) considered impossible. I am not upset at all, and what I have done is work to get funding to assist Centinella Hospital, and we'll continue to work with them to improve their emergency uh, uh, treatment facilities. If we could get them to be authorized to be uh, a trauma center, it would be wonderful for the city and wonderful for the region. All right, so we'll look for more on that. <laughs> Tracy. Thanks, Dominique. Um, <laughs> hey, you know that's what that's what you get when you do things people don't expect. I mean, uh, it, oh, I got you. It's Radio Free 102.3 KJLH, Compton, Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Inglewood. It is time to pass the mic to Steve Harvey, uh, Mayor James T. Butts Jr. Thank you so much for being with us. Just quickly, what would you leave us with this morning? Quickly, we passed an emergency ordinance to uh, prevent evictions during the. Uh, duration of this declaration of emergency and tomorrow we're going to pass an emergency ordinance to provide the same protection to small businesses that they will not be evicted for being being unable to pay their leases for the the duration of this emergency and i also am encouraging our elected representatives at the federal level to provide a subsidy for both business people and renters and mortgage holders for the duration of this emergency. Well, that's great stuff. Thank you so much, Mayor James T. Butts Jr. Family, we got to go. As you go on your way up. Thanks so much. Let's take a moment to affirm ourselves. Let's do what we do. Let's take that deep breath in and let us release. Today, let me remember, in the words of Jim Brown, the decision-making process. Eliminate the negative, establish the facts, and choose your best option. Till next time, Radio Free Family, one love.